Hi everyone and welcome to the Bible Project podcast. We're well into Genesis now, reaching chapter 10, which is part 79 of season 2 of our journey together through the book of Genesis and in fact, Lord willing, the entire Bible. I would remind you that this is a long-term project and I'd really recommend that if you're just picking it up today, you write back to the start and pick up at the beginning. You can either do that by going to season two where we begin the actual studies of the book of Genesis or if you want to go right back to the start then season one gives a short a short series of six minute short videos covering each and every one of the 66 books of our Bible and with the introduction alongside that it hopefully gives you a basic overview of the whole Bible before we launch off together in more detail. I'd also like to say that the transcript for all these messages is contained within the uh, episode notes of any audio version of this podcast that you might be listening to. But with that, we launch off straight into continuing today's look at Genesis chapter 10, which I've entitled The Table of Nations. So we got a brief overview last time, but we're going to begin this time by considering the family line of Japheth, the Japhonite. And I'll just do that by, re by reading for you Genesis chapter 10, verses 2 to 4, which says this. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Medii, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer, Ash Ashkenaz, Rephath, and Togomara, the sons of Javan, Elishish, Tarshish, the Kittites, the Rodanites, from these the maritime people spread out into their territories by their clans within the nations, each with their own language. So that's the Genesis chapter 10, verses 2, 3, and 4. But before I begin speaking about uh, that in detail, I'd like to just unpack some of the background information. And I need, I feel, to confirm that what I'm going to tell you is credible, even when considering it from sources outside the Bible. This perspective is not just reached from the biblical narrative, it has been confirmed in other, wise, in other ways. The earliest chapters of the Bible are sometimes referred to as the prehistory section of Scripture, and that generally is thought to cover Genesis chapter 1 to 12. Now, Genesis chapter 1 to 9 refers to events where there is very limited, if any, historical record, but that's not so here beginning in chapter 10 through to 12. They are, from this point forward, all sorts of ancient writings, monuments, even inscriptions on monuments and other things which archaeologists, linguistic scholars have been able to identify where the people mentioned in this text have ended up. And even in the last 20 years, modern DNA evidence is testifying to the fact that the descriptions of the nations described in Genesis chapter 10 here are in one review I read, and I quote, are entirely reasonable. So we can go through this list of names and tell what nations were produced and described here, but described for the first time in its original narrative. So let me explain briefly where all these people listed here in these opening verses ended up. Gomer had some descendants who moved westward to Germany and Western Europe and even into Britain. Magog, those people ended up in the southeast corner of the Black Sea into what today is called modern Georgia. And media, which is the Medes, not surprisingly, they settled in Persia, and some of them were even known to have settled in India. And Javan became the ancient Greeks. As a matter of fact, the same Hebrew word used here is, is translated Greece in the book of Daniel in chapters 8, 10, and chapters 11. Tubal and Meshech became the people of modern Russia. In fact, the word Meshek is where the Russians get their modern name for the city of Moscow. And Tiras, that's modern Italy. So it seems that Noah, his son Japheth, produced the Russian people, the Italians, the Greeks, the Germans, the Welsh, and even some of the people who settled in India. 
Now, to our modern mind, that can strike us as odd. Most of these areas seem to be in Europe and not so much India. So India is not in Europe. It's in Asia, obviously. But we'll come back to that in a moment. But the pattern here that is given is that all the sons of Japheth, and then he picks some out. So he gives the overview and the list of names, and then he picks a few out. In verse 2, he picks out Gomer. And as I said, Gomer produced the Germans. Then in verse 4, he mentions Javen, who ended up settling in what I said is what is called modern Greece. And it seems some of those people, uh, recent evidence suggests that some of those people ended up in Cyprus, with some of them perhaps ending up in Spain and Macedonia. Then we are finally told that closing verse from this section, from these the maritime, in other words the Mediterranean coastal people, spread out into the territories by their clans within their nations and each with their own language. What he's saying is that these generational children and their grandchildren became families and those families became nations. And that's the point that's being made here through this list of names. By the way, he mentions languages. He does not at this point go into any detail, but we're going to get into that again next week. Now, before I am going on, I want to pause and go back for a minute and talk about Japheth. Japheth is the father of what experts today call the Indo-European people. Now, have you ever heard that term Indo-European? You've probably heard it banding about somewhere in your mind and wondered what it means. Well, that term refers to India, obviously, and Europe. Now, in most people's minds, these two parts of the world are not usually thought of as having a common history or ancestry. But the term Indo-European is the standard modern classification of people who use the, uh, these languages, these languages that we have today. Now, this classification was created more than 200 years ago. And it suggests, and by that classification, of course, it suggests that these people linguistically have a common origin. Isn't that interesting? I find that fascinating. In the 1800s sometimes, in the 19th century, linguists discovered that the languages of the East and the West were related, meaning they had a common ancestor language. I'm just going to quote to you something from Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, which in its introduction states this, and that the section title is the End of European Languages, and I quote, the most important linguistic family in the, of the globe comprising the chief languages of Europe, together with the Indian, Iranian, and other Asiatic tongue, was first revealed in the 19th century by, by comparative and historical study of these languages. They are also referred to as the Indo-Germanic languages, and it was established that all have descent from a common ancestor language spoken in the late Stone Age, probably in Eastern Europe, by a people or a group of peoples of unknown mixed race. The prehistoric dialects of the primitive Indo-Europeans accomplished a migration into India, Persia, Greece, via Rome, and the western borders of Europe, where we find at the beginning of recorded history. The parent speech was highly inflected, but historically the tendency of the Indo-European languages has been towards the analytical type of construction as of that found in European languages and the languages of India and Persia demonstrating a common ancestor. It even actually says found in French and English as well. Now I know that's a little bit heavy going but I hope you're getting the drift of what I'm suggesting here. This means that Genesis chapter 10 which was written at the very least 1500 years earlier well before linguists analysed languages and discovered sometime in the 1800s that the European languages and the languages of India and Persia, they all had a common ancestor, which is exactly what this text is suggesting here. You could say, had these people read and believed their Bible, they would have saved them a whole lot of time and work. Now, I find that really interesting. And that, you see, is the family line of Japheth. But next time, we're going to talk about the family line of Ham. I look forward to seeing you then. I'd just like to quickly remind you that 
not only the transcript, but all the links to all the various ministries I'm doing across various platforms are in the episode notes in the audio version of the website. You'll find links there to both the daily and the weekly version of the podcast. The daily one is covers the days that, that I've done in, in, in roughly in the preceding week or so uh, of the living in of the Bible Project podcast, and then the weekly one is a roundup of where I compile those into a single episode, but also add on any other ministries or teaching or even sometimes music that I've been doing in other areas. You'll also find links there to my Facebook page and uh, my what's the other one YouTube channel and there's also an opportunity there if you want to to become a, a patreon and to support this ministry for as little as a pound a month by going through to my patreon page and by doing so you help support me in this work and you allow me to make this teaching more available more widely across other platforms So I love that you've joined me today on this journey together through the book of Genesis, and I'll see you again very soon, I trust. Bye for now.